story. Voters in Nigeria are eagerly awaiting the announcement of the winner in the race to lead Africa's most populous country, where incumbent President Mohamedou Buhari is stepping down after two four-year terms. Our VOA reporter, Peter Cloti, is monitoring the proceedings from Abuja and is on the line to brief us on the latest. Welcome to African News Tonight, Peter. Thank you very much, Ayers, for having me. So, Peter, although it has not been confirmed by the head of Nigeria's election commission, there are reports a third-party candidate in Nigeria's tightly contested presidential election has caused a major upset by winning in its biggest city, Lagos. I'm talking about Labour Party's Peter Obi. Could you tell us a little about that? Well, yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, indeed, that is the report coming from uh, uh, Lagos that Peter Obi has shocked Asiwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu, the former Lagos state governor, by winning that. And the local reports coming from Lagos also showed that Asiwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu has accepted uh, Peter Obi's victory and has said that he is a Democrat. He will accept the outcome and that you could. You win some, you lose some. Um, However, we are waiting, like you said earlier, for the INEC uh, chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, to officially, officially declare who won. So we are waiting. Uh, A a couple of uh, hours ago, uh, he announced that the Lagos uh, uh, state officials will be officially announcing the outcome of the elections in Lagos, uh, it didn't happen uh, because of a, a few things that they are trying to arrange. So we are waiting for Professor Mahmoud to call on the Lagos team to announce the official results from Lagos. Uh, Peter, I'm just curious, uh, Peter Obi, what propelled him to this kind of a victory? Well, it is all due to um, the enthusiasm expressed by the youth, at least that is what some of the supporters tell us. They were telling us that for the first time, they felt motivated to go to the polls. For the first time, they felt motivated to organize themselves. For the first time, they said they were the problems for, not, for sitting on the fence and not getting involved in choosing who Nigeria's president uh, had been for the last so many years of election. So they thought that this time it is their time. It is their time to to want a better Nigeria, to want improved living conditions, to want uh, a better way of life. And that is why they thought that their best hope is uh, Peter Obi. That is what they are telling us. However, former President Atiku Abubar, uh, Vice President Atiku Abubar is also saying that, you know, he has a pedigree, he has a track record. I see what you ball out there to the book. He's also saying the same thing, but it looks like Peter Obi's candidacy appeared to have generated a lot of buzz from the youth. And Peter, uh, rights groups, uh, Amnesty International has urged the Nigerian authorities to investigate what it described as widespread violence unleashed on voters in parts of Lagos, Rivers, Kano, Edo, and Delta states over the weekend. Uh, What is that all about? It is true. Uh, And even civil society organizations and local poll observers, as well as foreign poll observers, have called on the international uh, authorities here in Nigeria to crack down, to investigate, to uh, hold those people responsible for unleashing violence and causing disaffection and tension and naming people, uh, to hold them accountable by investigating, arresting, and prosecuting them to the full extent of the law. Indeed, there were reports of violence, there were reports of injuries. In some instances, there were deaths, and that is why people are so incensed. They are condemning the act that it is not what they expected. People went to the polls peacefully. They didn't expect that such violence would be unleashed on them. Uh, and, and that is why the calls have been so vociferous. And the authorities, uh, uh, I'm, I understand, uh, launched investigation into the allegations uh, of this violence that occurred in some of these parts of Nigeria. So anything else, Peter, you'd like us, uh, you'd like to tell us about what's going on? Because uh, Saturday's voting was uh, also marred by long delays at polling stations, as well as scattered reports of ballot box snatching and attacks by armed men. 
Well, that is true, and uh, a lot of the INEC officials said it was quite disappointing. They thought that thing Nigerians, a lot of Nigerians have moved on. They want to see better organized elections, transparency, credibility of the polls. They didn't anticipate that some of these things were going to happen. But the police and the joint patrol team of the police and the military uh, had assured us that they had deployed to prevent some of these occurrences. But indeed, as the report said, uh, that happened. Now, the NDI and the IRI also issued a statement saying that uh, it was unfortunate that the elections were not transparent enough. They faulted INEC for not doing it. They only praised INEC for organizing the elections on time, but said that the ongoing cash crunch prevented people from going to the polls and that the violence also prevented people from actually going to the polls. However, the INEC tried to uh, solve the problem by extending voting to Sunday to allow those who were affected by glitches of that caused the long delay for them to go and vote. So here, even in Abuja, there's a, a place called Lupe where people couldn't vote because of violence. Uh, uh, and they went back on Sunday and voted. Uh, so that is the situation here at the moment. Uh, yes. VOA's man in Abuja, Peter Cloti, thank you for your input. Thank you very much, Yehez. Reporter Mike Mbonye is in Port Harcourt, Nigeria. He spoke with people in the city about the election process. I am Benjamin Kamde, a businessman. All right, sir. Well, the election has come and gone, uh, but I have several reservations about the process. The malfunctioning of the beaver's machine was not encouraging. Most people were not allowed to vote. And then if you see the results, most of the polling units, they will tell you 45 people, a total number of votes. And that portrays the fact that the beaver's machine did not work. Most people that came out to vote were not recognized by the beaver's machine. And the polling agents will tell you that they do not have the code to the beaver's machine. Even to upload results, it was the same problem. They, 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 they we are not able to upload the results. So with this, I think I'm not satisfied with the process. My name is uh, Chief Chaudinka. I'm a trader. My brother, I'm not happy. I'm not happy. Where I voted was very peaceful. Everything went very smooth, but at the long last, they started saying that they can upload. From they can upload, some group of boys now came and carried the bylaw bus and ran away. And different centers like that have the same issue. And as I'm talking to you now, I learned that they are somewhere writing the results and all the rest. So my brother, I'm not happy about what happened. I'm not happy about what is happening now. Yes, I'm suggesting a rerun. They should make out a date and cancel the result and rerun the election again. Thank you. For more on Nigeria's presidential election, please check out voaafrica.com and stay tuned to all your favorite VOA news programs for updates. Officials in Cameroon and Niger say several million people in Boko Haram-affected territories are threatened by severe hunger as floods and wildlife destroy thousands of hectares of farmland. Governors from the two West African nations visited northern Cameroon on Friday after a crisis meeting in Difa, Niger. They say millions of people, including thousands who were returning after fleeing conflicts between cattle ranchers and fishers, need food and resettlement help. Moki Edwin Kinzeka reports from Yaoundé, Cameroon. Lake Chad Basin Governor's Forum officials say millions of refugees and displaced persons returning to towns and villages in Cameroon, Chad, Nigeria and Niger are in urgent need of life-saving aid. Boko Haram terrorism in the region has left more than 36,000 people dead, mainly in Nigeria, while 3 million have been forced to flee their homes, according to the United Nations. Midji Bakari is chairman of the forum, made up of eight governors of Boko Haram-affected territories. 
He says he visited Boko Haram affected areas in Niger and Cameroon Friday so he could understand challenges facing those returning to their towns and villages. Bakari spoke to Tele Sahel, Niger's state broadcaster and Cameroon government owned broadcaster CRTV. Tous les activités étaient he says several conflicts are reported among civilians returning because the Lake Chad Basin, which is home to more than 40 million people, has shrunk 90% in 60 years. Bakari says livelihoods in the area resolve around livestock, fishing and farming. He says he held a crisis meeting with Mohamed Muda, governor of Niger's Difa region, to see how living conditions of several million people in dire need can be improved and their security against potential Boko Haram attack assured. Bakari, who is also the governor of Cameroon's far north region on the border with Chad and Nigeria, blames climate change for the disappearing Lake Chad Basin waters. He says clashes between herders, fishermen and farmers over water and tributaries of Lake Chad are reported on a weekly basis. The forum says thousands of people displaced last year by flooding and elephant attacks are also returning and need resettlement help. As the governors call for international help for the returning refugees and displaced persons, Cameroon, Nigeria and Chad report that migratory caterpillars, crickets and weaver birds are disseminating thousands of hectares of farmed land on their borders. The farmlands are either owned by displaced persons or grow food for refugees and displaced persons. Jean-Félix Wakagi is the highest...